Hello there, it's Mark from Solace, and I'm here to talk to you about JMS Toolbox and its support for Solace PubSub Plus. JMS Toolbox is a universal open source JMS client tool that allows you to connect to different queue managers such as IBM MQ, TIBCO EMS, ActiveMQ, and now Solace PubSub Plus. Once connected, it allows you to browse the different endpoints, including both queues and topics, as well as publish or remove messages from those endpoints. On top of those basic queue browsing functionalities, it also allows you to create message templates from the messages that you find on the endpoints and use those messages or other sample message files to create scripts in order to assist in your development, testing, and troubleshooting processes. I'll add a link below in the description so you can download the tool and try it out for yourself. All right, let's talk about a common use case where a developer might want to use JMS Toolbox, and that's to handle poison messages. So a poison message is a message that your application failed to process and was therefore knacked back to the messaging system and put on a dead message queue or a dead letter queue. Um, so in this case, we're gonna you know, pretend like the situation that, that happens a lot um, is essentially you develop your event-driven microservices locally, you create your unit tests and test with the test data that you're provided and things look great. But then your test or QA team get your application running in the test environment and as they start to pump data through, they start to see errors and poison messages showing up on the queue and need to go to you as the developer to help them figure out what's going on. So let's go ahead and take a look at how JMS Toolbox can help us do this. So on my screen on the top left, you can see that I'm connected to the PubSub Plus Cloud instance, which I've marked as our test environment. So in this environment, um, if I look at the queue slash tutorial queue, I can see I have six messages uh, on the queue waiting to be consumed. So let's pretend like this is the test team. They're going to go over here to my IDE and run our consumer against Solace Cloud. So the consumer is going to start up. It's going to process you know, the first one, two, three, four, five messages successfully. It then got a severe error on the fifth message. Um, and even when it was tried to re-deliver it and process it, process it again, it still failed. So now they've asked the developer to come in and take a look and figure out what's going on. So as the developer of this code, you know, I can look at it and say, oh, okay, I know that you know, I process text messages, and then if it's not a text message, you know, I'm going ahead and logging an error. So when I browse the messages here, so if I refresh on the queue, they're all consumed. So let me close that queue and open up the dead message queue. I can see I have one message here, which is the one that caused the severe error. And in this case, um, just by looking at this, I can say, hey, the type of this message is bytes and not text message. So that's why you know, I'm having the exception. Now, in many cases, the QA team will not allow you to actually modify or change things while they're running their formal tests. So in order for me to actually test that that is the issue in my development environment, I can go ahead and you know, open this message and kind of look at it in more detail. Um, but I can also just save this message as a template. And so I'm just going to change, save this as a bytes message template, click OK. And now if I go and connect, I can actually take a look and close this. And if I connect to my development environment, um, which is my local broker, I have the same queue and I can go ahead and say send a message from a template here and send that message that we just saved. Not want to change anything, just send it as is. And if I look at that queue, I now have that message waiting. So that allowed me to easily take a message from the test environment, send it to my development environment, so I can now modify my application, 
and try to process that message and make sure um, that my fix works before letting the test team know. So now that we've seen that JMS Toolbox can be really useful to troubleshoot poison messages, I wanted to point out one more piece of functionality that I find really useful about the tool. And that's the ability to create test scripts right in the UI. So let's check it out. So if I go to JMS Toolbox and I go to our script center here, it pops up a nice UI. I can go to scripts and say, give me a new script. So let's go ahead and call it our awesome test script. Why not? So as part of our awesome test script, we can add multiple steps. So let's build off of our poison message use case. So I already had several test files that I did my original development against. So I want to go ahead and still use those. So those were text messages based off of this template. And I want to send them to my development environment for now against that same queue tutorial destination. And my test files are in this test files directory. So what this allows me to do is set a template and then switch out the payload for each message that is sent for each file in this directory. So I'm going to add that as the first step. And then let's add a second step. So we obviously know that these byte messages also exist in the test environment and probably production. So we're going to go ahead and use that template and we'll add that as the second step to our test and send that in our development environment to make sure our code handles that going forward. We want to send that once. So now that I have those two steps, I can go ahead and hit save and run it and go ahead and execute that script. And we can see three messages were sent for the three files that I had in my test files directory. And then one message was sent for the bytes message template. So if I go back to my Q browser and I go into my development environment, oh, I already have it open. So if I open my tutorial queue and hit refresh, I can see that I now have four more messages from those four messages that were just sent with my script. So before I end the video, I just want to point out one more thing, and that's that JMS Toolbox has a REST connector, which runs on port 9998. And this REST connector allows you to make well, REST requests to kick off actions in the tool. So one of those things that's super useful for automated testing is that you can kick off the test scripts um, that you create using the graphical user interface via a REST request. That's all I've got to, for today. Thank you for watching, and if you have any comments or questions, feel free to drop it in the discussion section below the video. Thank you.